We all know that wealth refers to the value of everything a person owns, less any debt they owe. But did you know that the hundred richest people in India have more wealth than two thirds of the population? Of those, the richest 15 have more wealth than half the population of the country. Let's represent the population of India as 100 people. The poorest 90 in red, the richest 10 in green. Now let's see how India's total wealth, around 216 trillion rupees, is divided amongst its people. The top 10 have three quarters of the total wealth. The bottom 90 are left with only a quarter. But you know what? This still does not tell the full story because the bulk of the wealth of the top 10 actually belongs to the top 1. Now how did this happen? Two thirds of our 216 trillion rupees wealth that is around 144 trillion rupees was created between 2000 and 2014. Who did it go to? It turns out that the bottom 90% got only one-fifth of it. Four-fifths of this huge sum of wealth went to the top 10%. Again, this is still not the full story. It is in fact the top 1% that take away more than half of these 144 trillion rupees. Mind you, it is this theft from India's growth that has sharply increased inequality in this country. In the year 2000, the division of wealth across these groups was like you see here. They all had roughly a third of India's wealth. But by 2014, the top 1% share had increased dramatically from a third to a half, while the rest lost their share. Some economists argue that more money in the hands of the rich will trickle down to those below. But is it really the case? Consider the last 25 years. In 1991, a fifth of world's hungry were Indians. 25 years later, in spite of great increase in wealth, India's share in global hunger has actually risen from a fifth to a fourth. India has lost its fight against hunger. As a result, India now has one of the highest percentages of underweight children in the world. This is almost twice as much as the low-income countries. Their per capita income, however, is half that of India. Apart from being underweight, nearly half the children in this age group suffer from stunting, which health experts identify as the key indicator of malnutrition and is irreversible. Illiteracy follows a pattern similar to hunger. In 1991, India had 280 million people unlettered, almost a third of the world's illiterate population. In the last quarter of a century, these numbers have hardly changed. In fact, India's share in global illiteracy has actually risen. This is hardly surprising considering how long an Indian spends in school on average. Compare this to our neighbouring countries, for instance Bangladesh. Despite India being economically better off than Bangladesh, our numbers are worse. Incidentally, Bangladesh also outperforms us on healthcare expenditures, spending a greater percentage of the yearly government budget on health. Around 78% of all money spent on healthcare in India is in the private sector. As a result, around 40 million people are forced into poverty every year by incurring debt to pay for treatment and care. Providing universal health care throughout India would cost around 320 billion rupees. This may sound like a lot of money, but it's just a small fraction of the 39 trillion rupees of tax revenue 
foregone by the Indian government from 2006 to 2013, mostly on accounts of tax breaks given to the rich. It comes to about five trillion rupees per year. Now let's see what all can be done with five trillion rupees a year. Providing universal health care in India would cost zero point three two trillion rupees per year. Providing food for every Indian would cost zero point eight five trillion rupees per year. And ensuring elementary schooling to all children under thirteen. would cost 0.22 trillion rupees a year when we add up all these numbers it comes to less than a third of the tax concessions to the corporate sector and the rich now can we honestly say that we do not have the money to provide food healthcare and schooling for every indian not only do we have enough money for all this but plenty left for other long term welfare measures Calculations based on national sample survey data indicate that 1 trillion rupees would provide piped water to all Indians. A similar amount will pay for construction of toilets for 600 million Indians who don't have them today. This is less than the 3.4 trillion rupees that the Indian government lost due to reduction of customs duty on account of gold and jewelry alone. It is time we decide what kind of India we want. An India where the rich continue to get richer while significant sections of our people live in abject poverty or an India for all its people.